You can see something's been glued on. It's got. It's fine. It's fine. I meant to do that. Hi guys, my name is Annabelle from Annabelle and Ben's Antics, and today, ta-da! We are going to be using a treadle sewing machine, and we are going to be using it to make this, which is a shirt cloth kit thing, which is what you guys requested on my last vintage sewing machine video. Now, this sewing machine is not mine, though I am going to be working on it and restoring it for my friend Emma. By the way, we're going to be doing a Q&A because she is coming over in a few days to work on all my cosplay Christmas stuff with me, so thank you very much, Emma. And she is a graduate fashion student, so if you guys have any technical questions for her, or general Q&As for me, please leave them in the comments down below and we will do our best to answer them in one of our cosplay Christmas videos. However, back to this machine, she was a bargain. I got her for £15 on my way home from Emma's the last time I went to see her in Cornwall. She seems to run really nicely. I did thread her up and try and have a bit of a stitch, but I've got to be honest, never used a treadle before and think I might need to work on my technique. But before we go back to stitching on her, I think we need to do some restoration because the wood is fairly worn. The lid also does not screw on which is a real shame because i actually sold my screw box literally yesterday and then this morning went oh i'm fixing this up i need to go get some screws went to get my screws and realized i no longer own any so um we're not going to be attaching the lid today i'm just going to do that when she gets it but we are going to be restoring it because yeah it's not great you can see something's been glued on it's got it's fine it's fine i meant to do that so you can see it is covered in glue a lot of the vinyl has come off i have a plan for how to not repair this but we are going to cover it up very very neatly but first let us take a look at the sewing machine now this machine is a singer it is in what i believe is its original cabinet it has this lovely kind of square design i've got one of these machines and it is absolutely beautiful it's one of my favorite designs because it reminds me a lot of like the greeks and stuff there's a little bit of discoloration there's quite a few scratches but there's no major damage and there's no holes where I can see that it's gone through to like the metal. It is a bit dusty because it has been sat up because I have tried to use it and then chucked a, another project, that pink stuff, over the top of it and then just totally forgot about it. But it's fine, we're going to clean it anyway. Then inside the cabinet we have these beautiful double doors. Ooh, we have ooh, a drawer full of things, I didn't know that was in there, and an instruction book which is always handy. You've also got all of the internal mechanisms, the belt seems to go nicely and if we step on the pedal she does seem to run very nicely though i think i have a bit of a technique where i keep making her go backwards and now i'm done playing around let's uh, have a look what's in the drawer okay so i don't think i caught it on camera but i just basically threw these pins all over the inside of this which is quite unfortunate okay so we have a pot of pins which we'll probably add it to in a minute because i'm pretty sure half of them have fallen down we have the instruction book which is good. This says that it's a Singer 66 for family use, which I do quite like. We then have these two button pieces, which are very cute. They look like they're made of some kind of pink material. I will leave these in here in case Emma can use them for a project. We then have some Singer sewing needles. Oh God, I'm dropping everything today. Those will come in handy just in case anything breaks. We have, oh, a little bag of things. So this little bag contains several bobbins. It is also very worn and thin. I wonder how old that is. We've then got, looks like some plain cotton. We can probably use that as test fabric actually. We have some more Singer sewing needles, very handy. A screwdriver, yay. We like it when these things come with tools. Some scissors, I wonder if they're any good. Mm, doesn't look like they touch anymore. The blades look a bit warped, but still very nice. There's some paper towel for some unknown reason with some flowers on. I'm going to pop this in the bin because I don't think it is necessary. Oh, we have a very large thread. <laughs> nope, my brain's gone. Whatever this thing is. Seam ripper, that's the thing. So the lid for this is broken, but it actually says singer on it, which is seriously cool. We have some more fabric, which again, we can use for a test piece. We have four white buttons. Very pretty. I will leave those in there for Emma as well. And then a lot of pins and broken plastic. So let's grab the pin pot again and pop all these away. With that, let's get the hoover, hoover out all the inside, and then we can start on actually polishing up the wood. Okay, so it's quite dark in here, so I'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see this, but one thing I've noticed with a lot of the stuff at the bottom, everywhere else seems to be fine, especially at the back here, there's lots of these pieces that are essentially very, very loose. So what I am going to do is I've got my good Gorilla wood glue and a paintbrush, and we're going to try and stick all of those pieces back down before we polish anything, just to seal it all up, because we don't really want them loose in case in the future it does need to be cleaned and hoovered and it comes out. So next thing on the list is polishing all of this up. 
which will hopefully go well. Let's see if this works. So I just wanted to show you guys this because you can very clearly see the difference of the side that I have oiled and the side that I have not. Not that the lighting here is doing me much good, but this is the side that I have oiled. You can see that there is some marks on it, but they're fairly faded and it is quite good. This is the side that I have not oiled, and this is pretty much what the other side looked before. It just shows you how much the wood repair oil can actually do. I'm really, really happy with this. Now just to do every other side and inside as well. Okay, so all of the wood oil is done. It has to dry for an hour or two before I go over it with some paper towel just to wipe off anything that hasn't been absorbed by the wood. So while we're waiting for that, I figured we would work on the sewing machine. So I have my screwdriver, my oil, I have forgotten my cleaning brush, so we're going to go get that. And while I clean the machine, you guys have seen me do this quite a few times now, let's have a chat about it, shall we? So an interesting thing here is that though the book that came with this machine is for a 66K, this is not a 66K machine. After comparing it to the bobbin, I have concluded that they are completely different to what is shown in the book and going by the serial number, this machine is actually a 201K from 1939. The same year World War II began, the Wizard of Oz movie was released and the first Thin Mint cookies were baked and sold by Girl Scouts. The model we have here is known as the Centennial 201, which I am hoping I'm pronouncing correctly. These were mostly sold in sewing cabinets like the one we have here. The 201 has several iterations over the years, starting in 1935 and ending in 1961. I actually own one that I think is from the 60s, and it is widely known as one of the best machines Singer ever produced due to its neat stitches, durability, and how smooth and quiet the motion was. I actually got really lucky, and when I was browsing online while researching this video, I found this brochure page advertising this exact cabinet and machine from 1940. Bearing in mind that this one was made in 1939, I think that it was likely sold through one of these adverts. According to the price list in this brochure, it would have cost £25 to £28 to buy it new depending on if you are buying cash in hand or on a payment plan. And for people who are thinking that's cheap, that is the equivalent of £1,568 in today's money, which is nearly six months worth of wages for the time. Because of this, they were often brought on higher purchase, which is essentially like how we finance cars today. As they were such big investments, most people would use them to provide a second income for the family. Sewing at home was actually one of the few socially accepted jobs that a married woman could do at home without the harsh judgement of society, especially because in the years after 1939, the UK went into World War II, sewing machines were essential to the make do and men movement, as most people sometimes went years without any new clothes, so old ones had to be constantly repaired and renewed. Okay, so that is the machine and the cabinet all done. We just need to do the lid and then I can actually try sewing with it. So with the lid, we are going to polish up the wrong side, the underside that's gonna be sat on the top when you're sewing with wood oil, just like the other stuff. Gonna let it dry, give it a nice wipe off. While that dries, we are going to trace around it with some paper. We're then going to use the paper as a pattern to cut out a little bit of wadding, a little bit of fabric. We want it to be a bit padded because that is going to help hide all of the unevenness that's on the top even if it doesn't sit as flush once the lid is open on the door. I don't think this is too much of an issue because by the looks of things, the door doesn't really sit under the top of the desk, which a lot of my other treadles that I've used have done. The wadding and the fabric are then going to have some PVA put on them and going to be glued together. The fabric is going to be quite a bit larger than the wadding is, just so that we can fold it under and the wadding is then going to be glued to the paper. Fabric is going to be folded under and glued to the paper and then the paper, fabric and everything else is going to be glued onto the wooden top. I'm probably going to seal the edges with some mitre bond just to make sure it is extra, extra just sealed and stuck on there <laughs> and hopefully it will look absolutely fantastic when it's done. For the fabric I am going to be using this awesome brocade which I actually got to make a winter hobbit outfit which I have just finished cutting out so I have quite a bit of this fabric left over though I do plan to use it for a cosplay at some point but for now I am okay sacrificing a little bit because it is currently the only fabric I have in my stash that Emma actually liked. <laughs> well everything cosmetic is done other than sticking the upholstered fabric onto the wood but we can't do that until it's dry so while that's drying, let us commence. I have threaded this up and now we need to actually see if she sews. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let's go. So I couldn't figure out why this machine would not stitch forward. It is because 
this lever here when it's down here with all these little numbers that's the size of the stitch when it's going forward that's reverse anyone want to guess where it was when i first tried to sew with this it was right there we're just gonna uh back to about 15 i think so we know it sews and we know it sews well which means that the next thing to do is to put all of this stuff away so that we can have a look at the cloth kit. Okay, we have spent all day working on the machines, but it is finally time to open this so that we can actually sew something on it. So this is a blouse size 16 to 18, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger for me. Uh, vintage sizes do tend to come up a bit small, but I think even vintage 16 is not going to be my size, which is fine. Right, we have some thread, we have buttons. Ooh, we do like buttons. We have instructions. Oh, that's so cool. I don't think I've seen this on any of my cloth kits so far, but there's actually a thing on the back with centimeters which is incredibly handy and I really appreciate this we should have this in patterns these days so yes this kit is for a blouse I actually have a skirt in a matching fabric which I'm planning to do for a video next week oh they gave us stickers so that we can identify pattern pieces that's cute I like that oh it is quite a nice fabric I am a very blue person oh it actually has come with interfacing which is good because none of my other ones did that's really cool because the last few cloth kits I have done have required interfacing but they have not actually come with any which has been really annoying so the fact that this one does come with some i think is excellent right i think we have all the pieces so let us give them an iron and then we can pin everything together is this cotton cotton and polyester so we need to change the iron a little bit low can you guys hear that rain like i don't know what it was today it was so sunny this morning and then just whoosh, just everything everywhere so we got started ironing out all the pieces before measuring out the strips we needed of interfacing cutting that out and ironing the other bits on the first thing we then had to do was stitch down the facing so i ironed and pinned this in place before taking it to the machine Now this shirt is a size 16 to 18, meaning it is going to be way too big for me. However, one thing that this does do is give us plenty of room for French seams. So we pinned the shoulders wrong sides facing, stitched them, flipped them, pressed them, and then flipped them right sides facing before stitching again. Next, I moved on to the collar facing. The instructions here said to run a stitch around the edge and pull it to gather it and then press and stitch. It looks <laughs> So we're gonna unpack this because genuinely it looks utterly terrible. And then we're gonna press it like I normally would. And then we're gonna restitch it in a way that actually looks good. Sherlock, you realize that's still wet, right? Does he care? No, no, definitely not. Do you always have to sit on my projects? Of course, I took this opportunity to use a seam ripper that came with the machine. I thought it would be a bit weird using one that's so large, but honestly, the big handle just made it easier to use, so that was a pleasant surprise. Once that was done, I went around the edges and manually folded it over. Is it neat? Meh but it works and looks a hell of a lot better than the other one did, so I'm gonna call this one a win. Then I pinned it to the neck of the shirt and stitched it down. After that, we were onto the sleeves, which were both also pinned then stitched French style. So this is actually starting to look a little bit like a shirt, which um, was kind of hoping it would be a bit longer so I could wear it as a dress. Oh, I've got the front bit as a sleeve on it. It's not really gonna go past my crotch, which is fine. I can still wear it with leggings and I quite like the tartan. I'm hoping it goes nicely with the matching skirt I've got, which I think is gonna be my next project for vintage sewing machines after Christmas anyway, because Christmas, we have some special things planned guys so make sure you subscribe to see that whole 12 days cosplay christmas videos oh i'm actually prepared this year so we don't miss any <laughs> anyway i think i need to finish sewing this together i'm debating what i do with the fastenings because it says that i should use buttons and buttonholes but honestly i'm kind of thinking i might just sew on poppers and then put the buttons as like decoration but that is a decision for later for now let's carry on with this so i pinned and french the sides before stitching the sections at the cuff and shirt bottoms to be open the hem then got folded over before we ran a gathering stitch along the edge of the sleeves and attached the cuffs things snips out the facing to also iron in place with that done, I took a minute to stick the now dry padded top to the wooden base, then used Mitre Bond and its sealing agent around the edge to give it a very firm fix. As there wasn't any need for the sewing machine now, the last bits being all hand stitched after all, I folded it away and put the top on before moving it out of the centre of my room. Doesn't it just look amazing? Though it does need a quilt over the top as there is no way the cats won't be sleeping on this for the next week until it gets picked up. And with that, the last thing to do was hand stitch around all those pinned areas and stitch on the fastenings, which of course took forever. And yes, 
I went for poppers. I did use the buttons too, don't worry. They're just going to be decorative though, as I can't be bothered with buttonholes tonight. This whole video was supposed to be a one day project after all. And I mean, it kind of happened. If you count finishing this at three in the morning, finishing in the same day. <laughs> but whether it's three in the morning or three in the afternoon, it is still finished, which means let's see the grand reveal. I think this shirt came out super nice. It is definitely quite complimentary colors and a lot of the lines across the front actually match up, which I was kind of surprised at, to be honest. When it's done up, you definitely can't tell that it has poppers and I think it looks great with a belt, even if it does look good as just a normal shirt as well, though I think I'd probably want to tuck it into something. It also fits a lot better than I was expecting, so it is definitely a win there. And certainly, though it's definitely not the neatest stitching I've ever done, it's not bad for a day's work. And we're done, so cheers to that. No, we're not gonna pop the wet glass onto the fabric, it's on my own board. So this is the finished cabinet, the finished sewing machine, and the finished shirt. Overall, I would call today a success. <laughs> I mean, I say today I've filmed all of the reveal stuff the next morning because it got to 3 a.m. last night and I still wasn't quite done. So, you know, we're gonna roll with it. So just over a day's worth of project. And I think it came out really, really well. Emma's choice of fabric for the top is utterly gorgeous. Not gonna lie, little bit better that I had to give her the really nice stuff, but I've got so much of it, it's fine, it's fine. And it is nice and solidly on there if she rips it hard enough it will come off with i think minimal residue which was one of the reasons i popped paper under there so not just the wadding directly on but i think that's a really really good top and we are obviously going to have to keep it covered so that the cats don't just lounge on it for the next week while we wait for her to pick it up now only thing we haven't done is obviously screw it together she's going to do that when it gets to her house because i have no screws which is fine so let us remove the top so that we can check about the machine. Also, I forgot to mention the front of the cabinet has the most gorgeous kind of wood grain pattern on. Obviously with the wood repair stuff, it's kind of taken away some of that grain, but it was so splattered and not great looking before. I do think it's an improvement. I mean, overall, just the wood repair oil that I used, which I literally got from Sainsbury supermarket, has been so effective on this and quite a few other machines I've used just to help cover up scratches and damage or at least make it less noticeable. Even here on the top where you can see where it's all worn, everything has faded to a very similar color. So it's not perfect and you can still see that it is worn, but I think that's good. It shows that it has been loved and used and you know what? We buy these for their stories. <laughs> when it comes to the machine, I have to admit, I think this is one of the best ones I have ever worked on, certainly now that it has been cleaned up. It is in such pristine condition, guys. The plate has like no rust on it, all of the decals are perfect. I can't see any faults in any of the decals, which is amazing. It spins really nicely. It definitely works a lot better now that it's been cleaned and the fact that I couldn't figure out, you know, why it wouldn't sew forward when I first brought it home because I had it set on reverse. So yeah, that's a thing, but it's fine and it's really, really good and I think she's going to get a lot of use out of it. Also the accessories it comes with as well, from the scissors to the bobbins. The only thing we don't have is anything other than this foot. I actually did find a spare one of these I had hanging around, so I've just chucked that in there in case this one ever breaks. However, Emma does have a box of random singer sewing accessories which when she comes over to collect it she's going to bring with us and we're going to have a play around because looking at the box we're 90% sure they're going to fit not 100% but we'll get there I think we might be in luck this machine 10 out of 10 I would love to know more of her story I got it from a couple who were just having a clear out and as for making the shirt on it I would say it was very very good this was actually my first time using a treadle I have done little things on a treadle obviously i've got my like big industrial machine not that i've had access to it for like a year and i do actually have my own pretty much exactly the same or very similar version of this treadle machine which was really really good but i maybe i don't think i ever actually used it before we had to pop it in storage because we were moving here and unfortunately this is a very small house that we just don't have the room for stuff in overall i definitely think we can call this a win i am very very excited by it i am love this shirt it is so 80s it reminds me of something my mum would have worn when she was a teenager i do have one moment i do have this cloth kit which is exactly the same fabric it is just a skirt which I am hoping I'm gonna be able to make before I take off because you guys don't know we are moving again and I am going to be losing access to nearly everything that I own for probably at least a year if not longer. When I move I might try and give you guys a very quick tour of my sewing machine collection and what it's looking like these days but it will have to be a very quick tour because I will literally be filming them as we're packing them away which 
it's fun but with that guys i will see you next week please remember to subscribe for more vintage sewing machine sewing and cosplay content i do a video every single wednesday and i would love to see you here and if you have any questions or comments remember to leave them down below me and emma as well who is the proud owner of this puppy are actually going to be filming a whole bunch of cosplay christmas videos when she comes to collect this and i was thinking it might be nice to do a q a she is a graduate fashion student so if you have anything technical to ask or you have some questions whereas like me who's had no formal education since doing a textile course in school when I was 15 versus her who's literally gone to university to it how we both kind of run things differently and do our own thing please leave them in the comments down below I would really love some things to ask her and it'd be nice to throw that into some of the videos we are filming and what videos are we filming for Christmas well ooh, you will have to wait to find out next month's vintage time machine is going to be good do we need a preview I think we might need a preview one second oh god she'd be heavy oh this guy's is a vintage genome and she uses cams which i'd never heard before before getting this she's also completely disgusting so let's pop that away for now and you can see her next month and until next wednesday guys have a beautiful day bye